We were basically a protein farm. You know, we were meat and eggs at the height of the summer, 1,200 layers, um, down to 600 in the winter time, 3,000 or so broilers throughout the summer. We run about a uh, 50-head flock of sheep. Our goat numbers fluctuate from 10 up to 20. Seven brood cows, so we're looking at 21 on the farm. We purchased this land in 2017. It was all wooded. So we had a company, uh, a logging company come in and they talked to us about, you know, mark the trees you want left and we'll leave them. They did everything with a, a forwarder. So a feller buncher to cut the trees, forwarder to move them out. There was no skitters. There was very little slash left behind. So the fact they use what's called a forestry mulcher or a forestry mower and grinds up the stumps, um, incorporates all that material together. So what we were left with on the couple hillsides were sort of a mulchy sublayer, um, which we then drilled uh, a seed mix into that I made up and we spread a bunch of manure on it. And the next spring we were grazing animals on it. We remain very pleased with the trees we chose <laughs> to leave in the pasture, specifically looking at trees that had a bit of a canopy to it before they logged it off so that those would open up more and the maples and the oaks do a really good job, um, I feel like, of like giving those animals some, some relief from the really, really hot days, um, especially that we've been having and seem more at ease in and among the trees. Um, that helps with the heat, it helps with the flies. I just think it's, it's sort of just more natural for them in ways. If you're gonna leave smaller, younger saplings, leave a handful of them. And like, you've got trees that are pretty mature, they may be coming down in 10 to 15 to 20 years. And so you wanna, again, not be planting trees, but have some that are coming along behind them. So we raised cashmere goats. We wanted goats because they're fun and they eat nearly anything. And there were a couple of cashmere breeders in the state. And so they make a lot of sense for us because um, we raise them for meat and fiber. We don't sell the fiber, but um, one of the farms that we got a bunch of our goats from, Springtide Cashmere, they have a large um, herd too. And so we're able to sell cashmere, to sell raw cashmere to them and they process it. The hair you can see is actually the guard hair. So some goats have really long guard hair, that long stuff that's coming off their spine. And that basically protects the cashmere. Um, and we harvest them in the fall and then comb out the cashmere in the spring. So usually this, the hides we harvest with the, the feeder animals um, are relatively full of cashmere. A lot of what they do is like work the edges, which I think if you're going to have forest, you're going to have these edges that are sort of undefined. Um, and they do a great job. We have a ton of bittersweet here. And so, yeah, I mean, this is all, this is exactly why we like them because they eat it right off. Um, and it's super nutritious because it has like a really, you know, like a lot of perennials that has a really deep tap root. Um, but what we want them to do is basically weaken the plant over time and maintain our permanent fences. Most of our animals are finishing on the same schedule as the cows, the same age as the cows. Right. So this is a really good um, forage for them because they're only coming through most of these places once a year. And so they're, they're eating it, gaining, and then they'll leave and then we'll come back the next year. The whole vibe of this place changed when we cleared it. Like it was very dark, 
really dark. And then when we opened it up, all of this stuff that was like on the, on the road edge that was there because they had used herbicides for so many years were like, this is our opportunity to shine. Um, and I don't think it's like, it's not coincidental like that stuff stops at the fence. Like we put the fence in and then we've managed it so that it stays on one side. Um, and as more people are either logging stuff off or, you know, harvesting it and then tilling it, um, you know, the goats are like really good at working out those initial species. Cause the first year after we harvested, there were like hundreds of thousands of maple seedlings just like everywhere you know the goats were like psyched you know so like they're grazing stuff that is not you know not normally grazable i guess because there's so much so many different plants um they don't get tired of it and you know defoliating what is permanent a permanent area um means that all that soil stays in place you know it's just like yeah. kind of feeds the whole cycle yeah. so it seems really simple at once and like really smart sometimes too, you know.